Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to create a project and set it up so that we're ready to design. To create a new project, we must first make sure that we're in the right hub. It is not possible to move a project from one hub to another. We can see the hub we're in here. Then we can click the new project button in the top left corner to create our new project. You can locate your site either by scrolling around the globe or by typing in the location of your project. In this case, I will type in the city of Paris and move the map to where my site is located. You can also type in your site's full address. While zooming in and out of the map, a white box appears or disappears. This is currently the maximum size of the project that we can create. The current limitation is 2 by 2 kilometers or 1.25 miles squared. The confirm map area button will be grayed out until the white box appears to create a new project. The right panel shows the map provider and the terrain resolution that will be used. Sometimes using a satellite image can help you get a better view of where your project is. This might be a good solution in more rural areas. Now, click Confirm and create your project. The loading screen will take 10 to 30 seconds depending on the size of the site that you chose in the previous step. In the background, we're preparing a project and building the terrain you just ordered. When the loading is completed, a data order tab will open. From here, you can order data for your project or import your own data. The list of available data sources depend on the location of your project. Let's start with some buildings. You can customize the area where you want to download the buildings, but in this case I will leave it as it is. Once the order has started, it will automatically send you back to the overview. We will repeat the same steps for property boundaries and roads. Once that is done, we will start adding the imported data sources to our project. When exiting from the order window, we can see that the scene doesn't contain any of the data we just ordered, so we have to add that ourselves. But before we do that, I'll give you some quick instructions on navigating your project. You can scroll in and out as you normally would, and you can orbit by holding down the right mouse button while moving it around. You can also pan the camera to the side by holding down Shift plus the right mouse button at the same time. I'll briefly explain the user interface of Forma. There's an Autodesk icon in the top left corner that will take you back to the company hub, and this is where you exit your project. Don't worry about losing your work. Forma saves what you do for each change. The first option is your navigator. This is where you will spend most of your time and where you can organize and edit your proposals. The second button is your library. This is where you can find your imported data. The third one is extensions, which is where you choose from a selection made available in Forma or upload your own extensions. The next is where you can manage access and ensure that the right people have the correct level of access to your project. Below the line are different modes, such as compare mode, where you can place analysis side by side for its visual comparison and the format board, where you can create widgets of your proposal to have a good overview. Now let's add the data that you ordered to your project by going into library. To start, we'll add property boundaries. Simply click on the thumbnail and the property boundaries will open in a new window. We can go ahead and just click add. Let's do the same for roads and buildings. As the buildings can contain quite a lot of information, it might take some time for them to load. You can either add all the buildings selected in blue, or add single buildings by clicking on them or holding down shift to select several buildings at the same time. You can also drag over them by holding down your left mouse button. For now, we're going to use all the buildings, so we'll click Ctrl A on Windows or Command A on a Mac to select all the buildings and click Add. We are now ready to start, so let's go ahead and go into Navigator. All proposals are created upon a base. If you change something in your base, the changes will propagate to all your proposals that use that base. In this case, we can see that we have added buildings, roads, and property boundaries to our base. There are several ways to edit your base. You can either click on the pencil symbol in the left panel, click on the object in the scene, and click on the Edit Base button in the right panel, or double-click the object in the scene. The purple edge on your screen will indicate that you are editing your base. To start, we will add a site limit to the project. It is important to add a site limit to ensure that you're designing within the boundaries of your site. This also sets you up for running analysis and seeing your area metrics. We can draw a site limit using the site limit tool, or in this case, since we have a property boundaries, we can convert one or more of the property boundaries into our site limit. We can do that by entering our base, selecting a property boundary, and clicking the Define as site limit button in the right panel. If your project is in a place where you cannot download property boundaries, you can create your own by using the site limit tool found in the toolbar. We want to start designing with an empty site, so we'll select the existing volumes on our site and move them to our proposal. This will become our existing situation, which we can compare our new proposals to later. 
To do this, we'll go into our base, select the volumes on our site, right click, and then use the Move to Proposal option. For the building areas to appear in the area metrics, we must convert the volumes into buildings by adding floors. To do this, selecting the volumes and choose the Add Floor option in the right panel. You can further detail the area metrics by adding functions to the buildings. To do this, select the building and select a function that will be associated with it. The area metrics will dynamically show what you have selected and the breakdown of your buildings. The rest of the right panel is where you can trigger our available analysis tools. You can add buildings and other geometry to our site through the toolbar, but we will go through that in another video. You can now see that we have a building layer on both the proposal and the base. Let's change the name of the proposal to existing situation for clarity. Now let's create a new proposal so that we can start designing. The new proposal will not include the buildings that were originally on the site, as these do not belong to our base. We have now created a project and added contextual data, and we're ready to start designing.